Hey, 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 welcome back to What Time. Paul Marriott here. Have we got a good one for you today? One of our favourite launchers, Sideload Channel Launcher, has been updated to Sideload Channel Launcher 2. So make yourself comfortable, kick off your shoes, grab yourself a beer or a coffee, turn down the lights. No, no, turn down the lights a bit more. Yeah, that's better. Let's get stuck in. What time? We'll overtake time. Whilst browsing through the Google Play Store the other day, I'd stumbled across a new version of an app that I've been using for the last eight or so, eight months or so, and I love it. The Sideload Channel Launcher. From the number of reviews that were there, it appears that it's only just come out, and all very good reviews. Let me read a few of them out. Here's one from Willie Olson. Wow, this is by far the best of the best sideload channel launcher of them all. Now it's like a walk in the park to set up and find perfect icons. What a marvellous job developer has done here. It's truly amazing how easy it is to set up and get nice icons on the fly. Terry Gerald says, I've tried over 10 other launchers which failed to meet my needs in some way until I found sideload channel original. This was by far one of the best launchers until sideload channel launcher 2 launched, pun intended. This version has added some features that make it much easier to etc etc. Rave reviews. Having bought it myself and having played with it for a couple of days, this is what I had to say today. Excellent, marvellous, brilliant, fantastic. I bought and used the previous version of the launcher on an NVIDIA Shield TV and was pleased with the results. The, this update is so much improved. I don't know where to begin. So, okay, rave reviews. So what's it all about? What can it do? Let's take a look at the Play Store description. Amongst other things, there's a new SQL database backend for improved stability, the ability to create tiles from an image URL, which I use in the, in the old version, the ability to add bookmarks to a tile, excellent, that's new, built-in optional web browser, note that it is not a fully featured browser, a file viewer, ability to pin protect tiles and configuration, useful if you want to hide certain APKs from prying eyes, and finally a brand new interface. It goes on to say its features include fully customizable layouts, widget support, useful, ability for, to design tiles using, and when they say design, I think they mean configure tiles using an application icon, icon pack, image, or an image, URL of an image, or an included icon. There's the ability to add multiple apps to any tile, which you could do in the previous version as well. Ability to set an admin pin to protect your setup and tiles from little ones. Uh -huh. Import and export of your tile configuration, as you could before. Custom wallpaper support, as you could before and no ads. Well, the no ads bit, we'd expect that from any paid app, wouldn't you? Okay, that's all the blurb out of the way. Let's have a look at it in action. Well, as you can see, this is how I've got it set up at the moment. Um, let me show you a few of the variations that I've tried. You can plain screen, different background. You can have the rows pushed over to the left, in the center, or to the right. You can also show or hide the row names and the row tile. Really quite customizable. And there we are, back to the home screen with all the rows centered. So using the controller, using the controller, I'm on the home screen, go down to the bottom, there's two icons there, go to the left one, and we're going to open up admin row, admin mode. So let's just say we want to move that top row down one row. Go in there, move row, come down, enter. Let's just say we want to move that icon up. We move it up. And it's gone right over to the right hand end. We bring it back across and save it. Okay. Let's just say we want to add a tile to this row. We can add an application or a custom tile. Custom tile. Well, with an application, that's a one off, one application. Let's just add that first one and we're going to choose that tile. Okay, done. We can then add a custom tile, a for folder, a drawer. Um, if we do that, we have the option to give it a name, rectangular or squared. We can choose the image. Let's choose the image. We go, let's say we have application icons, application icons, and you've got a whole bunch there of the applications. You can choose those icons, or you can choose an included icon. There's a whole bunch of included icons that you can choose from, 
or you could choose an icon pack. Now I have some icon packs installed. I particularly like this icon pack because it has greeny shieldy icons and you've got all kinds of categories and you can find all kinds of icons to suit your choice. Make your nice greeny ones. Or you can also choose a local image somewhere on your shield somewhere you might have an image that you want to use. Here I'm going to go into the background image that I had. Let's just use that one. The other choice is also an image URL so you can type in that done. You can add apps to it so you can add various apps. Let's say that one, that one, that one, that one and go out of there. Four apps added. You can also add some app actions in there. You can open the app drawer. You could go for a file viewer. You could go for a Google app drawer. Notifications, or you can add, add a URL. I've done that on a different one, so I'll come back to that one later. Okay, you can require a pin if you, you need to require a, a pin in app settings. How do we do widgets? Let's add there, add a widget. So there we have the clock widget in this. Backups. Backups are a piece of cake. Here we go. Look, we go into there. Go into app settings. We come down to import export configuration. And export file configuration. It automatically saves it to your main storage. And you can see there that it's stored to the side load channel to folder. I'm going to import a previous a previous config configuration and let's go back. There's that one we just did and there's a previous one we did. So we're going to go back without those icons. Boom, 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 boom. And there we've got it. Okay. We then actually ran into a small problem with importing a config previous configuration. When trying to do it a second time, we came up with this error message that said select import file. The only solution was to do a full reboot and then do the import to the file that we wanted. Moving over to the Shield home screen, these are the channels that I've added and saved earlier on. They act as they would normally on the Shield home screen. If you click on the icon at the end of the row, you will get access to all of the apps, even including the side loaded apps. As you can see there. And that one's a tile with a drawer with several apps in it. So if I click on that, you can see that and clicking out of there. Okay. We still have access to all those other things that we had. File viewer, you can and there it is. Come out of that. Out of that, out of that, out of that. We've got the app drawer which we've seen before. It, that's configured to two columns at the moment. You can configure it to one or two. Up to you. As I mentioned before, you can configure a bookmark. Um, all you need to do is click on there. In this case, it's some boring YouTuber. How do you get it? You'll need to go to the Play Store. And in the Play Store, you can search for side load channel launcher 2 bish bash bosh there it is it's the first one so in conclusion side load channel launcher 2 the pros are easy tile setup easy draw setup tile image configurability bookmarks to urls channels to the shield home screen great plus
On the downside, the cons. Settings can't be accessed from the app drawer as yet, though they can be accessed from the icon at the bottom of the screen, so it's not too much of a problem. No power dialog on the main screen. That's something that is available in other launchers. It would be nice if that were added. And our final verdict is, not difficult, five stars. Excellent. So that's been a general overview of the uh, side load channel launcher too. At a later date, I'll do a fuller in-depth tutorial on how to set up and configure your shield to your liking. If you install this app, let us know how you get on with it or tell us what launcher you're using down in the comments below. Thanks for being with us and watching this video all the way through to the end. If you're hearing this, you've obviously got to the end. So please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll catch you when you catch us in the next one. Toodle pip!